What can I do when I become weak? Where do I turn when I am weak in the faith? How can I continue on? That's the idea that I want us to think about today. What can I do when I am weak? The scriptures teach that we shouldn't give up. That we should never give in. But that we should always continue in our faith, in, in a life faithful to God. There's a song that, that we sometimes sing, and I thought about this song when I was writing the sermon, When My Love for Christ Grows Weak. I don't think that maybe our love for Christ grows weak, but I do believe that there are times in our life that we become weak in the faith. I, I believe there are times that things come upon us that makes us weak in the faith. And there are so many things that can affect us. Health issues is probably the number one thing that affects most, most all of us. Then there's the death of a family member or a loved one. I am kind of dealing with that this morning. Most of you know or you read on our Facebook page where a great man who is an elder of the church, of the place where I was a preacher before I came here, was in the hospital. They had him on a ventilator. And uh, he needs a, a, a liver transplant. But his kidneys and his lungs are failing. And so the transplant is really out of the question, the doctors say. So Friday, the family made a decision that they're going to take him off of the ventilator. And they did that yesterday at 10. As of right now, as far as I know, he's, he is still hanging on. But the family knows that the end is in sight. And this man meant a lot to me. He was always an encourager to me as a preacher. As a matter of fact, when Stephen and Anna came to visit us one time. Stephen wanted to go fishing, and, and he, after being up all day, he, he hooked up his boat and took Stephen and I fishing all night that night. As a matter of fact, it was after Wednesday night services. So this man means a lot to me, and, and yet I'm happy because based on his life, what I know of it, I have no reason to doubt he's not going to be in paradise. But yet you know, I'm, I'm sad because I'm going to miss him. He's the very one that I went to when I needed help, funds to go to uh, the mission on a mission trip to the Philippines. He's the one who took my request before the other elders. He's the one who helped me financially. He is a great man. And so because of that, I, I, I'm a little... <coughs> I'm a little weak this morning because I know that the end is in sight for him, but yet I'm happy for him. Money is another thing that causes us to ask God why. Probably one of the hardest questions for you and I to, to be asked is why. Because there's really not an answer when somebody asks why this or that happens. Jobs is another thing that causes a man's faith to get weak, or even our own mind and our own physical body. All these things, and even more, will affect our faith as a Christian. And regardless if you think they won't, regardless if you think that you are strong enough to face these things, sometimes we're not stronger than our problems. The only way that we can be stronger than our problems is depend on God. But that's what happens when, when, we, uh, when we start to face things like this. We ask why and our faith starts to dwindle. 
If you will, go with me to 3rd John. 3rd John, and I want you to look at chapter, well, it's only one chapter, but I want you to look at verse 2. And notice what John wrote there. John in this text said, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health. You know, that's the very prayer that I pray for all of you throughout the week. Especially for those that are sick or dealing with sickness. I, I pray for them. I, 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 and, and that's what we're supposed to do as, as Christians, as a family. We are a family of God and we are to pray for one another. And here John says, I pray that you may be in good health. But not only does he pray that, notice the last phrase of this text. And it goes well with your soul. Not only is John praying for the physical welfare of those that he knows, to those that he is writing to, he's praying for the spiritual welfare of them as well. And that is too another thing that I pray for every day. For my spiritual welfare. For yours. That we as a family of God, as a congregation, will grow in in, in the Word, and that when we grow in the Word, friends, I, I know without a doubt we'll grow in numbers, but we've got to grow in the Word. Today, just as Jude stated, stated here, I pray for you. I pray for your health. I pray for your soul. But I would like for you to go now over to the book of Jude. And I want you to notice what Jude writes. Jude is, is the last book, next to the last book of the New Testament. And as we read some, some text here in Jude, I want you to see the encouragement that Jude has. He, he's going to encourage us not to, uh, not to give up, but to fight. He's going to encourage us to do battle when... And, and even when God's Word is attacked, and even when God's Word is attacked in us, don't give up, but battle it. When our faith is weak, and even as Christians, don't give up. And when Christianity is attacked, when this congregation or the church is attacked, don't give up. Fight. Do battle. And one particular battle John uh, Jude Rock refers to is those that are false teachers. We're encouraged all through Scripture to fight against the paucity. When someone turns their back on the Word and, and leaves the church, we are to fight against that. We are to go and encourage them. Encourage the wayward Christian to return and help them to strengthen their fight. The very reason that a lot of people leave the church is because they lose the faith in God. I believe it was this it was this morning that and I believe it was Coy that when we were talking in a Bible class said that uh, some of the problems with man is their lack of faith. It's easy. It's easy to have a weak faith. Especially when we're facing so many different things. I want you to look with me beginning at verse 16 of this book of Jude. Notice what Jude writes about the church that he is to the Christians that he's writing to. He says, these are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. There are people that were in the church and around the church that were always complaining. They were grumbling. They were walking according to their own thoughts, their own ideas, their own lust. And it was causing the church to stumble a little bit, to have a, have a weak faith. But Jude says, don't give up. Verse 17. But you, beloved, remember the words that were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time. Who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause division not having the Spirit. 
Jude is telling us to be strong. To stay in the faith. They're doing things on their own and one day they will face God in, the, uh, in, in judgment and they will have to give an account for these things. And even if a person who claims to be a Christian is doing these things, causing divisions in the Lord's body, talking about Christians, they will stand up before God and they will give an account. Jude is also encouraging us to maintain a life with God. I want you to look at verse 20 now. and We're going to read to the end of the chapter just five verses. Maintain your life with God is the idea here. He says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus unto eternal life. And on some, have compassion. Making a distinction. But others, save with fear, pulling themselves them out of a fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you from a thoughtless before the presence of His glory with exceedingly joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise to glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. God is the one that can keep our faith strong. God is the one that can keep our faith from struggling, from uh, stumbling with a, with a weak faith. God is the one that can help us. And Jude said, "I want you to be strong." God wants us to be strong. I want you to be strong, and I also want you to be in good health. Our faith is what's going to keep us sustained through this life. So how can we do the things that Jude and John wrote about? How can we be in good health physically and, and spiritually as well? What can we do when we are weak? What can we do when we're facing that that causes our weakness? What can we do when my love and my faith for God grows weak? That's what we want to look at today. It's very simple. Sometimes we, the simplest things that, we, that, that will help us is, is what we fail to remember or fail to look at. So this morning, this sermon is very simple. What can I do to keep my faith? What can I do when my faith grows weak? Number one, I need to understand I have a problem. I need to focus on things that cause weakness. As your preacher, I stand before you as a man. And there are many times that I face things that causes a preacher to struggle, just like you do. And when you look at what a preacher is, a preacher is a man that is just like you. He faces the same temptations that you do. He deals with the same problems as you do. And sometimes people think, well, preacher, you shouldn't have that problem. Uh, only a member should have that problem. Well, why? Members are preachers as well. But why shouldn't a preacher have the same type of problems that a member has? So the key is, my health, my health will either help me or it will hinder me in going to heaven. My faith will hinder me or help me from going to heaven. 
That's exactly what we need to understand. Look at Matthew chapter 14. Look at Matthew chapter 14 and verse 31. Jesus is walking on the sea. And he's coming toward his disciples. And you remember, they were fearful. And you remember that Peter asked to come to Jesus. If you are Jesus, let me come to you. Bid me to come to you. And Jesus simply said, come. And then Jesus, I mean, Peter steps out of the boat. He starts walking to Jesus. But then he lost his faith. How did he lose his faith? He lost his faith by looking at the storm and the waves and the rain, very possibly the lightning and hearing the thunder that was all around him. He took his eyes off of Jesus and because he did that, his faith started to waver and he started to sink and then he cried out to God. Jesus reached down picked him up with his hand. And he said, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Dear friends, maybe that's our problem. Maybe Peter's problem there is that he did not recognize the issue that he was, was in. We need to recognize the problem that we're having. Physical things have a direct effect on our faith. Now, I have dealt with some things in the past few years that have really caused me to look at my faith. There are times that my faith is weak, and there's times when my faith is strong. But it's all because of some of the things that I had to face. And I realized if I didn't get a control over what I was dealing with, the outlook did not look too good for me as a Christian or a preacher. You know, what? We, you and I as Christians are really underdogs. What do I mean by that? We are always the underdog in life. Satan is always trying to get us. You know, Satan has the world. Satan has the person that's a non-Christian. And when we try to teach and preach to that non-Christian, that's when Satan will interfere with that person. But for the Christian, the child of God, Satan is always near. Satan is always on the back of us, in our ear, or just wherever, trying to get us to, to stumble and to fail and even cause our faith to become weak. That's what I mean by an underdog. But friends... We have the promise from God that God will see us through. God will help us and strengthen us to continue on. Just like Jesus did with Peter when his faith failed him and he started sinking in the, in the water, Jesus helped him by reaching out and lifting him up. God will help you and I when we need it. Find the strength to help our faith to increase our faith, but even help us overcoming some of the things that we face sometimes on a daily basis. Go over to the book of Judges, if you will. The Old Testament book of Judges, chapter 6. In Judges chapter 6, in the first six verses, we see there's a, a nation, a group of people that's oppressing Israel. And the reason that that's happening is that Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, verse 1. So the people of Israel had to, because of the persecution that they was having, they, they had to move out of their homes, move out of their land, and they went up to the mountains and they started living in dens and caves and strongholds which were in the mountains. And when 
whenever Israel had sown, verse 3. In other words, when Israel would plant seed and, and, and fruit, the Mennonites would come up, and also the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as poor as guys. And leave no substance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor donkey. They entered, verse 5, the land to destroy it. Everything that Israel tried to do, they were defeated. The food, the plants, their animals, they were defeated. No doubt in their mind, in their life, their faith was probably wavering so. Verse 6, we're told that Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Mennonites. And the children of Israel, what did they do? They cried out to the Lord. They prayed to God. And God listened to their prayer. In verse 8, the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all who oppressed you, and drove them out before you, and gave you their land. Also I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you would dwell. But you have not obeyed my voice. Maybe the very reason that you and I deal with a weak faith is because we're not listening to what God is saying and that He will help us and get us through. The problems that, that Israel had was because they did not respect, they didn't love God or obey God. Verse 11. They failed God. Now, let's look at verse 11 and go forward. The angel of the Lord I got that mark, Charlie, because here's another account of the angels of God, right? Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebit tree, which was in Oak, which belonged to Joash. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. Who's him? Gideon, verse 11. And said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man. Here is the prophet that's being sent to Israel to help them in their weak faith. And Gideon said to God, O oh Lord, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Notice that faith. Gideon said, God, if, if, you, if you really are God and we are your people, why is this happening to us? I see Gideon's faith kind of rocking here, don't you? And where are all his miracles which your fathers told us about? Saying, do not fear, the Lord will bring us up out of Egypt. But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him. The angel is speaking first. Now the Lord is speaking. He said, go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? In other words, have I not here talking to you? What's wrong with you, Gideon? What's wrong with your faith? I'm telling you, I'm here with you. And then Gideon says, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weak Manasseh. In other words, my family tree is not strong. I, we are the weakest in this tribe of Manasseh. And I'm the least in my father's house. I'm a nobody, God. How often do we let that stop us? I'm a nobody. Friends, with God on our side, we are nobody. We are somebody. We are the, the minority, uh, the majority, not the minority. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with you, and shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Then he said to God, If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that you are who talked with me. God, I, I don't really believe it's you, but if it is you, do this one thing for me. And, and, and Gideon asked him to stick there, and, and, and he went and made some food, and he brought it back, and he, he was told to put it on a rock. 
And the fire of the Lord devoured that food that was on that rock. Off the altar. Verse 24. And so, we think everything is okay. We think things are going grand. But, Gideon's faith still wasn't strong. Go down to verse 36. Because Gideon says, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said, look, I'm going to put this fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said. And that's exactly what happened. Verse 38. But that wasn't enough. That still wasn't enough for Gideon. Gideon said, Lord, one more thing. My faith's still not where it needs to be. One more thing. Don't be angry with me now, God. Verse 39. But let me speak just once more. Let me test, I pray, just one more with the fleece. Let it now be only on the fleece, but not on the ground. Let there be dew. And God did so that night. It was dry on the fleece only, but there was dew on the ground. And so, Gideon started to have that faith that he needed to have to overcome the obstacles. And verse, uh, chapter 7 is a very good account of faith in action because with 300 people, Gideon, with God's help, destroyed God's enemies. When we understand that we have an issue, that our faith is weak because whatever that issue is, this opens that door so that we can help it. The definition of recognizing when there is an issue is the feeling that one has to let us know that something is not right. May not have an answer as to what to do, but we know that something just is not right. But God has the answer. We need to understand also that our health and our soul will either help us or hinder us. And that's what we read in Matthew chapter 14. When we get sick, a lot of times we'll say, I, I'm too sick to come to worship services, or I'm too sick to worship or to work with the church, but I'm not sick enough to go out and get groceries or go out to eat or do other things. But we're always too sick to come to services. Now there are times when that happens. There are times when we're just too sick. And friends, that's the reason why we have set up the web system so that people that are too sick to come and worship with us can worship with us via our website or via our Facebook page. But yet we don't have them worshiping with us, but yet they're too sick to come. When we feel weak in our Christian life, our faith will affect us spiritually. And just like we used Peter, his lack of faith caused him to, to sink. But think about it. His good faith caused him to get out of that boat. How many of you have gotten out of that boat? How many of you would have questioned your faith? How many of you would have stepped on that water? I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure I, I, I had the courage to step out of the safety of a boat and step in that water. I'm not sure I would. But to give Peter credit, he's the only one out of those disciples that did that. He's the only one. So we need to understand a couple of things this morning. We need to recognize we have problems. We need to understand that our health will either help us or hinder us in our life as a Christian. And then when we realize we have a problem, let's seek to recover. Seek help. We need to get the help that is needed. And God, for our faith, is the only one that knows what we are dealing with. God. We can share what we're dealing with with someone else. We can talk to them. They can try to talk to us, but there's no way that they really absolutely understand what I am going through. Nor do I know what you are going through. But yet I can help you just by being there. God the Father knows what we're going 
through. He's always there. He's been with you when you went through it, when you started to go through it, and He will be there when you're through with it. They are, there are professionals that have gone to school to learn what to do to help us. But God already knows what we need. God already knows what we need to do. And a lot of times, we just need to trust God. But sometimes, we may need to combine the two. That professional that understands. And we need to trust God. And trust the professional's work, or work, advice. But always trust God. Nancy, every once in a while, has to go get a shot in her back. And she goes to Wakaga orthopedics to get this shot. And it does her does some good, but the first time that she got the shot, she came in and uh, she said, uh, do you know what that doctor wanted to do? I said, no. Before he started the procedure, he said, do you mind if we pray? And she said, no. She said, my husband's a church, is a preacher in the church. He said, well, I bet he's got a better prayer life than I do. <laughs> well, don't be so sure. But he prayed with her. How comforting is that? God's direction is so badly needing, needed in today's world. And in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11, we see that God will see us through whatever we are facing. Notice what Isaiah writes. He, about God, he said... God will tend His flock. Are we not God's flock? Is not the church the flock of God? Like a shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd. We are the sheep. We are His flock. Notice what else Isaiah says. God will gather the lambs in His arms. He will carry them in His bosom. And gently lead those that are with none. Oh, the comforting sound of these words. Regardless if the help that we need is physical, mental, or spiritual, seek the help that is needed. Understand that with help, without help, I may never recover. In Isaiah chapter 35, beginning in the latter part of verse 2 and going through 4, of verse 4, Isaiah writes these words, They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to, to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with a vengeance and with the recompense of God, He will come and save you. That's what was said to Israel. But dear friends, God is saying the same thing to us. He will save us. He will help us. And even as a Christian, I can reach out to those that I know that are struggling and try to help others. That's what we're told in Romans 15.1 where Paul said, we who are strong have an obligation. And this is the ESV. And I like what, what the ESV uh, translated here because it is an obligation to bear the failings of the weak the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves then why? to help others that is our obligation there are some simple solutions to do when we just don't know what to do we can pray 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, 18, to pray without ceasing. But in verse 18, it says, In everything, give thanks. In Acts chapter 2, in verse 42, we see the early church pray together. As in Luke chapter 17, in verse 5, we see the disciples ask Jesus to increase their faith. There is a quote by a great preacher who has gone on. Perry Cotham. I don't know if you know Perry Cotham, who he is heard any sermons by him or seen his writings, but he made this statement once. He said, Great saints have all been giants of the closet. What did Perry Cotham mean by this? I want to suggest to you that he meant 
what Matthew chapter 6 verse 6 says. But when you pray, go into the room and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Great saints have all been giants of the closet. We need to look to God's Word. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 15 and 16. In verse 16, the last part of that verse says we need to edify. The body of Christ edify out of love. God has given us a life. He's given us the Christian life. He's given us this life to enjoy it, not to dread it. We need to become wise and look to the Word when things happen that hurt us spiritually and even physically. We need to surround ourselves with those that can help us. But the sad thing about it is that a negative person will only bring you down. A weak and a faith person will only make your, way, your, your faith weaker. Paul wrote about a family that increased him, increased his faith and helped him in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16, Ornesipus. We're told there that he often refreshed Paul and was not ashamed of his chain, the thing that he was facing. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of the fools will be destroyed. As a congregation, it's easy to look out and see our smaller numbers during our worship service. It's easy to allow this to affect our faith. But we must not allow it to overcome us. As my wife keeps reminding me, be grateful for the ones that are here, but pray for the ones that are not. A good outlook. A weak faith can happen to anyone. It can happen over anything. You remember that Thomas? Thomas was known as Doubting Thomas. Why? Because his faith was weak. After the resurrection of Jesus, Mary saw the risen Savior and he ran. She ran to where his disciples were. And she said, I've seen the risen Savior. And what did they do? They doubted. Their faith was weak, Luke 24, verses 10 to 11. Jeremiah was told to go and preach to Israel to return to God. He thought he was too young to do this. He doubted his ability. His faith was weak. When we try to become stronger without God, we will fail, fail my friend. When tough times come, call on God, pray to God, look to Him, look to the Word. Remember, God is for us and nothing can be against us. Romans chapter 9, verse 31. One more conclusion that we can come to is this. We need to learn to stick with what works. God, His Word, the church, that's what works. We need to stick with it. Stick with it like glue. Because God is the glue that holds our faith to get through even in our toughest troubles. We need to remind ourselves of God's promises constantly maybe. Maybe we need to take a piece of paper and write down a promise of God and put it on the mirror so that we see it that day. Maybe we need to remember and to remind ourselves that God is bigger than anything that I'm dealing with. Maybe I need to seek God a little bit harder. And when we seek Him, Brethren, we will find God. That's a promise from our Heavenly Father. It may be that there's someone here today that needs to obey the gospel. Maybe there's someone here today that needs to, to respond and say, look, I, I've turned my back on the church. I've turned my back on God. My faith is weak. I just need the prayers of the church to help me get through whatever I'm facing. I don't know. But God knows. And God knows that we are here to help you in any way that we can. So if you need to respond to the invitation, do it now as together we stand.